Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell took to the Senate floor Tuesday to blame Democratic policies for inflation. McConnell said, quote, Americans' number one concern by a mile is the crushing inflation that Democrats spent us into. Over the summer, inflation hit a 40-year high. As midterms approach, Republicans have been united in their messaging of blaming Democratic policies for high prices. Democrats have countered that rising costs are due to supply chain issues from the pandemic or Russia's war on Ukraine. It's been just over a month since relentless rains and major flooding devastated eastern Kentucky. Disaster took homes, businesses, and at least 39 lives. Only a few months after tornadoes had caused widespread damage in the western part of our state, catastrophe struck our Commonwealth one more time. I traveled back to eastern Kentucky multiple times during the August state work period to survey damage, meet with survivors, and lend any help I could. What I saw were scenes of absolute destruction, waterlogged houses, swollen creeks, washout roads. I heard directly from survivors who shouldered impossible burdens over the past month, struggling to salvage belongings and to literally try to rebuild their lives. Agencies report that thousands of homes were destroyed and damaged in the flooding. Many of those affected lacked flood insurance. I'll say that as devastating as the flooding was, stories of heroism and generosity still shine through. The local officials I met with reserved special praise for Kentucky's National Guard. Our guardsmen mobilized at the outset of the crisis to perform daring rescues and to distribute critical supplies to stranded residents. Regular citizens also came to the aid of their neighbors and friends in any way they could, sometimes in trucks, sometimes on horseback or jet skis. Help was poured in from around our state and beyond, both from private charities and trained emergency responders. But of course, there's still a tremendous need for help. Eastern Kentucky is notoriously rugged terrain. It also had pre-existing communications issues before the floods. These factors have made rescue and rebuilding uniquely challenging already. And this is only the beginning. Though FEMA is playing a critical role in Eastern Kentucky's recovery, Kentuckians have grave concerns about shortcomings in the federal response. The agency's convoluted application processes have left far too many flood victims without the timely aid they need, often due to just simple clerical errors. I heard about these issues firsthand from countless Kentuckians I met during my multiple visits. Of course, I quickly called FEMA Administrator Criswell to say her agency needs to step it up. I visited the Kentucky Emergency Operations Center to review the joint state and federal response firsthand. And I convened leaders from our hardest hit counties, state legislature, and federal response agencies so we have a clearer lines of communication moving forward. I hope and expect aid will begin to flow more smoothly to Eastern Kentucky soon and I'll continue working around the clock here in Washington to try to help make that happen. And I promise to keep standing strong by Eastern Kentucky's side as our immediate efforts evolve into longer term rebuilding. A long road, a very long road to recovery lies before us, but Eastern Kentucky will come back stronger than ever. Now, on another matter, Mr. President, American families are hurting, and they're very clearly telling anybody who will listen to them what our priorities ought to be. America's number one concern, by a mile, is the crushing inflation that Democrats spent us into. The share of Americans who name inflation as our most urgent problem is almost triple the next closest issue. Democrats' policies have working people paying a Democrat inflation tax of more than 13% on top of their grocery bills, 
15% extra on their electric bills, and on and on, down the list of everything that families need to just stay afloat. As a result, Democrats have presided over plummeting real wages for American workers. The average American worker has gotten a raise on paper, but their bigger paycheck buys them less than their smaller paycheck bought them this time last year. Now, this wasn't inevitable. Inflation did not have to be nearly this bad. Democrats chose to spend so recklessly. Democrats chose to wage this economic warfare against the middle class, against their savings, against their financial stability, against the purchasing power and the lifestyles that workers and parents sacrifice literally for years to build up. Americans are also deeply concerned about the erosion of law and order in our streets, in our cities, on our borders, and across our country. When you combine together crime and immigration, the issue of law and order ranks as the people's clear number two concern, second only to inflation. Last year, the national murder rate reached its highest level <clears throat> in 25 years. Cities across the country are contending with an historic surge in carjackings. My hometown of Louisville is now averaging an auto theft every two and a half hours. President Biden's failed border policies have Customs and Border Protection encountering 200 percent more fentanyl and apprehending the most illegal immigrants they've seen in more than 20 years. So there's no mystery about the crisis facing our country. The American people know what needs to be addressed. Republicans know what needs to be addressed. But unfortunately, the Democrats who control the Senate, the House, and the White House are still refusing to get with the program. Democrats' top priority for the entire year was the multi-hundred billion dollar reckless taxing and spending spree they rammed through in August. <coughs> Americans may want their leaders to cut inflation, fight crime and drugs, and secure the border, but Democrats just spent hundreds of billions of dollars of the people's money doing precisely none of that. Instead, our big spending colleagues treated themselves to 87,000 new IRS agents, job-killing tax hikes, and the same kind of liberal energy policies that now have California officials warning, warning about rolling blackouts and begging people not to charge up their electric cars. Oh, oh, and our Democratic colleagues have given no indication that cutting inflation, fighting crime, or securing the border will be on the Senate's agenda for September either. When our people are hurting this badly and speaking this clearly, it takes a willful choice, a choice for Democrats to ignore them. Stable prices, safe streets, reliable energy, and a secure border. Four of the most basic duties that any government owes its people. Four things Democrats have proven they cannot deliver.